Hey guys, welcome into History Monday. Today we are talking about the single worst policy decision perhaps any government has made in the 21st century. Alright guys, so last week I introduced you to the intelligence failures in the background to the war in Iraq. Today we're going to talk about the initial invasion and the mistakes made in the first few months of that invasion. Now the first of these mistakes is this. The US government, when it came into Iraq, had this sort of neoconservative idea, or you could even say a liberal idea, that democracy, promotion of democracy, the instantiation of democracy is universal. That any government anywhere, any people anywhere will flock to democracy and it will sort of spring up out of nowhere. And so when the U.S. invades, their expectation is that when they topple the Saddam Hussein's regime, that grassroots democracy movement will sort of spring up out of the ground and it'll be easy. You know, the U.S. troops only have to be there for a few months. We topple the regime, the Iraqis create a demo democratic government, and we get out. And so this leads to one of the first huge oversights of the Iraq invasion is that is the U.S. only put in about 160,000 troops in the initial invasion, which was woefully inadequate for the post-war reconstruction period. Not inadequate for toppling the regime, but that's never the issue when you're talking about regime change and occupation. What's really important is that the occupying force has enough people to ensure security, to ensure that anarchy and terrorism and insurgencies don't take root. And so you need a lot of forces in order to make that happen. But the U.S. and the Pentagon under Donald Rumsfeld said, no, we don't need that many troops. We're just going to come into Iraq. We're going to topple the regime and this sort of organic democratic process is going to take place. So that was the first mistake that the U.S. made. They didn't have enough troops. The second mistake is when they came in, they toppled the government. They're trying to create a provisional Iraqi government. L. Paul Bremer, the sort of envoy, the, the person in charge of the reconstruction from the Americans' point of view, makes a decision that's called debathification. Now the Ba'ath Party were the people who were in control under Saddam Hussein. That was sort of the regime. And so, you know, these are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of government workers. These are the teachers. These are the people who run power plants, who run prisons, who run the foreign ministry. I mean, these are the technocrats of the society. You need them because they have the skills, they have the understanding, they have the experience, they have connections to actually run a government. And what happens is L. Paul Bremer and the Coalition Provisional Authority, which is sort of in charge of Reconstruction, says, nope, anyone who's upper level Bath Party, you can't work for the government anymore, you're not going to be paid. So you have just alienated the technocrats, the top level technocrats of a government who would be such an asset in helping you run a government. You just said, not only do you not matter, but you're exiled from being able to work in the Iraqi government. And this is going to come back to bite the U.S. even today because top level members of ISIS were actually a part of the Ba'athist party in Saddam Hussein's Iraq. They were part of the intelligence services, they were part of the army. And so you can see how telling 50,000 Ba'athist members, you no longer work for this government, you, you're not allowed to work, would alienate them, would create a lot of suspicion and hatred towards them. But even that pales in comparison to the worst policy decision the U.S. government made, which was this. The U.S. government decided to disband the Iraqi army. Now, important to know, the Iraqi army was by far the most important, most venerated institution in all of Iraq. And you had hundred thousands of men who were in the Iraq army at the time of the U.S. invasion. These are men who knew where all the ammo dumps were. There's millions and millions of weapons around Iraq that Saddam hid. These people know where these weapons are. They want honor. They're the main breadwinners for their family. You can imagine when the U.S. invades, they you would think, okay, let's co-opt this force. Let's co-opt these 400,000 men who, could, who are trained, who are armed, who know how to fight. Instead of just releasing them out on the street, maybe we should use them as police forces, as security forces to secure the borders around Iraq and to maybe use them as a reconstruction effort. But no, what do we do? We disband the Iraqi army and say, you, you know what? You guys, you don't matter anymore. We don't want you a part of this government. If there's one group of people as an occupying force, you should not 
make angry. It is the army of the people you just conquered because they are the people most likely to fuel an insurgency and that's exactly what happens. So the week before this disbanding order goes out, zero Americans are killed by an insurgency. The week after, five Americans are killed by an insurgency. What's the difference? Well, you've just told hundreds of thousands of men, you don't matter, you're going out on the streets, we're not paying you. You know, all those families that are relying on you and your pay, they don't get any money. Of course they're going to be angry. Of course they're going to feel dishonored. Of course they're going to go to the streets. They're going to go to the weapons and fight against this occupying force that's made them, that's excommunicated them from the society and has taken away their resources to feed their family. And so there you go, guys. That's what I wanted to get out today. We disbanded the, the Iraqi army the most horrible decision we can make because even today that decision is coming back to bite the Americans, to bite the Iraqi government, and has even bled into Syria because the leaders of this insurgency go on to help form other insurgency groups in Iraq and in Syria. We kicked out the people who were in the Ba'ath Party, the technocrats, so it was really hard to run a functioning government. And because of this de-bathification, de you had people out of work, you had organizations not running in the country, services like water and sewage were getting backed up because no one was working, because no one knew how. And finally, we didn't provide enough troops to have security in Iraq, and so you had this security vacuum with looting, with stealing, with anarchy in the streets. Well, that's it for today, guys. Not a very pretty picture, not a great way to start off an invasion and an occupation. Next week, we go into actual the, the, the eruption of sectarian civil war. But until then, remember, reality always trumps ideology. <laughs> <laughs>